Hello, is this Dr. Thorpe? It is. And Jessica? Yes, it is. How are both of you today? Very good, thank you. Jessica, let's talk to you first. Uh, can you tell me about your journey with narcolepsy? Sure. So uh, I started experiencing the symptoms when I was about 18 years old, and I was going to college, so I assumed that it was normal for students to feel tired if they were studying a lot and they were busy. Um, but what I didn't realize is that I was feeling sleepier than the average individual in college, even when I received about nine or 10 hours of sleep at night. So I didn't realize that I actually had a neurological condition. And about eight years after I started experiencing the symptoms, then I was formally diagnosed with narcolepsy. Okay, and how did the narcolepsy impact on you emotionally, physically, and socially? Uh, well, before I was diagnosed, I found myself um, afraid to attend social events. Uh, I found myself needing to, sl to sleep all the time. And so this did have an impact on my life outside of school. And even now with treatment, um, I still feel sleepy all the time. So I'm not able to keep up the social engagements that I'd like to uh, because I just don't have the energy even with treatment. And, is, and are you sleepy during the day most of the time or at night? Um, I'm sleepy during the day um, on a consistent basis, and as Dr. Thorpe can explain, people with narcolepsy also experience disrupted nighttime sleep, and so that's one of the reasons why I'm so sleepy during the day is that I'm not sleeping well enough at night. Okay, Dr. Thorpe, tell us more about narcolepsy. What are the symptoms, and why can it take years to make the diagnosis? Well, narcolepsy is an an incurable disorder. It's a lifelong disorder. It usually occurs uh, in children, but can occur at any age. Uh, and the main symptoms of narcolepsy are excessive sleepiness during the daytime, as Jessica has explained, but also weakness that occurs in the muscles that we call cataplexy, where if patients uh, get emotional about anything, they may fall to the ground. But in addition, there's a disturbed sleep that Jessica mentioned and that they may have uh, vivid uh, hallucinations or nightmares that occur at night, and they may have a feeling of being paralyzed at night, a very frightening feeling that they can't move uh, as they're falling asleep at night. And it does take a long time for patients to get diagnosed. In Jessica's case, over eight years, but for most people, around six years or longer. And uh, that's partly the reason uh, for that is because physicians are really not aware of narcolepsy and how to diagnose it. And I understand there's a recent survey that has revealed more information about narcolepsy. Could you mention that? Yes, this survey was done of uh, patients with narcolepsy as well as the general population and physicians. And uh, it really brought out how severely narcolepsy affects patients. 86% of patients say that it's a life-changing disease for them. And the general population really doesn't have a good understanding about narcolepsy. The physicians uh, feel that the treatments are not adequate, and 97% of physicians felt that there was need for new and better treatments, and only 12% of the patients felt that their condition was under good control with medications. Uh, what about medication? What about treatment? Well, there are a variety of treatments, but unfortunately, most of the treatments uh, tend to have some adverse effects. And so uh, uh, there's a number of concerns with the medications. They may uh, not be effective for all patients. The effectiveness may wear off over time. People may be concerned about habit forming or abuse with the medications. So although they do help some patients, uh, we definitely need better treatments. Okay. And Jessica, wh where can people get more information about narcolepsy? So if people feel like they might have symptoms of narcolepsy or they want to hear from um, other patients who have narcolepsy or people who are currently diagnosed and living with the condition, No Narcolepsy, K-N-O-W, nonarcolepsy.com has some great resources not only for people living with the condition or people who suspect that they might have it, but also for healthcare professionals that want to uh, better educate themselves about the condition itself. So now that's no K N O W, no narcolepsy.com. Correct. 
Okay, and Dr. Thorpe, how do how does one di- differentiate, make the difference between narcolepsy and a person just being tired? Well, most of us at some stage of our life are tired during the daytime, particularly if we don't get an adequate amount of sleep at night. But narcolepsy is different from that. Narcolepsy is sleepiness that's present every day. And uh, even if they take a nap during the daytime, they may be helped and a little refreshed by it for a brief period of time, but then the sleepiness comes back. So narcolepsy is a chronic everyday disorder, but it may be associated with those other features I mentioned the uh, muscle weakness, but only 66% of patients will tend to have that muscle weakness. But uh, looking for that and looking for the disturbed sleep, the hallucinations, the sleep paralysis, all that can help in making a diagnosis of narcolepsy. Okay, so again, one thing is being tired. Another thing is having narcolepsy. And the, the main difference is what? Well, most people will get it confused, and many patients feel that because they're tired and fatigued, that that's just the way they are. And what the, I recommend is that patients who are tired every day and fatigued need to find a reason for that tiredness. If they don't have a good explanation, then they need to see a physician because they could have narcolepsy. And we know that this is often misdiagnosed. Uh, it's misdiagnosed as depression not getting enough sleep at night. Maybe people think they have sleep apnea. So uh, one often has to persevere to find uh, the exact diagnosis. All right. Well, let me thank both you and Jessica, Dr. Thorpe, for uh, sharing this information with you, with, with, with me and with my Health Power audience. It's very helpful. And Jessica, let me wish you well with your narcolepsy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good talking to both of you. Have a good day. You too.